Hello, everybody. This is Nicole Whitlock with the Ecom Sellers Podcast. And I have with me my awesome, my amazing co host on this journey, <laughs> Kelly, the Ecom Mom Ward. Yes, Kelly and I are here to share with you some e commerce news, tips, and more. We come to you every Monday at 8 30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so we encourage you to join us, share this information with a friend, invite somebody to come follow us. We want to tell you what's the latest and greatest that's happening in the e-commerce space. We talk about everything from Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify, Walmart, and all the other things that happen to be happening in the e-commerce space. So with that being said, because both of us are a little tired today, <laughs> we're going to get on with the news. So Ms. Kelly, the floor is yours if you want to start. All right. Um, I'll stop with, start with Goodwill. You're like, Goodwill, what? But uh, Goodwill, um, they launched its first mobile app, um, shopgoodwill.com. It's available on Apple and Google Play. Mm -hmm. It allows customers to browse, bid, and buy from the website of over 300K items. Um, available from 130 stores around the country. You know, a lot of people will go on Shop Goodwill and buy, like, what they call blue boxes. And uh -huh. if you uh, um, especially jewelry sellers, they get a blue box, and it's just gonna be a bunch, you know, just like a box just full of jewelry for them to, you know, they'll pay like fifty bucks for it and something. And sometimes they get lucky and find, you know, pieces that are worth a couple hundred dollars, you know. So, you know, if you're trying to find a way to get inventory and not have to leave the house, or you can't leave the house, or don't have time, you know, there's a way right there with the app. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a trend. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to have to install the app now. <laughs> a new trend is that shoppers are starting to return to in-store shopping. You know, they're, you know, less ordering delivery of groceries and such. They're, you know, starting to get back out there um, and home improvement sales are going down and they said alcohol sales are going back up. So I guess they're finished with the bar that they built and now they're stocking the bar, you know, <laughs> there you go. <coughs> are back to entertaining, you know, fam, you know, fam, friends and family, you know, so Maybe you can start selling stuff that, you know, goes with alcohol. Maybe drink, you know, uh, drink, you know, bar glasses and barware and stuff like that. I understand. I'm going to grab a cough drop because of the fact that I'm dealing with whatever I'm dealing with. So you go right ahead. <laughs> All right. eBay states that people are buying more pre-owned items for uh, the you know, for more financial reasons, as well as for sustainability. Uh, the Gen Z is emerging as a major economic force for um, sustainability. And see re-commerce as a versatile tool in their purchasing toolbox. So people, you know, not only looking to save money by buying, you know, pre-owned stuff, but they're trying to keep stuff out of the landfills and make sure it has a longer life. Um, Amazon's going to be delaying their changes to the buyer cancellation process. It was originally supposed to start um, April 27th, and it is being pushed back to May 10th. Um, Etsy. Etsy can you can uh, sellers can now respond to all their buyer reviews. So sometimes a buyer will leave a review and not even contact you about a problem they had with your with their order. So it's a good way to you know kind of fight back a little, or they might get leave you an unfair review, and you can you know kind of push back a little. Be like, wait a minute. I tried to work with you and you never tried to work with me and, you know, and another uh, news is um, the post office. They're going to increase rates again in July. This is more for um, 
the stamps are going to go up to 60 cents and media mails will go up also increase to the uh, cost for insurance on packages and um, cost of certified mails and post box PO box rentals. Those are all going to be going up in July and stuff like priority mail and first class packages. You know, that always goes up in January and seems like media mail and the rest goes up in July. And they state by 2024, they should be um, getting a profit right now that, you know, because of how they run stuff until the uh, new uh, bill that just passed kicks in, they're at a loss. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, they don't get money from the taxpayers. They get the only money they get is from all the packages and mails and mailing and such. But that was the news I had. All right. My son just came in here. He did not follow any instruction. I said <laughs> one spoon. Lord have mercy. You're alive. Yeah, I am live. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, these kids. It's, it's been a crazy month for us. So. We are going to be talking about a couple of things that are happening this month here in a second. But, you know, with Autism Awareness Month, we've been working on following instructions. We've also been working on his e-commerce business as well. So hopefully in one of these sessions, we'll talk about what's happening in the e-commerce space with his store and his business. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the latest news that I have. Somebody's outside doing something to their yard at the same time. Can you hear that? No, you can't. Okay. My hair like a squeak. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. It's uh somebody is working on their um their yard and I just cannot believe the timing. But that's all right. It is what it's it is. Too windy. It was too windy. It's too windy here. for that. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about the latest in news. So the first thing, there's a couple of different articles. Um, the one I always bring them up in advance. So if they lock me out because you have to buy. I can't, show, you know, I can't show those. But anyway, so this first one is uh, specifically about Dallas and um, pop-up, you know, little pop-up markets, little, little uh, pop-up shops that happen all over. And they're inviting vendors to come out. So the reason why I shared that one is because of the fact that this is the time of year where there's going to be a lot of opportunity. Kelly and I talked about it in our last podcast around, you know, garage sales, People are donating stuff to thrift shops. I'm glad to hear about the thrift store having their own app now. And so if you are needing to get rid of some inventory, the pop-up shops, you know, the pop-up shops, that's, that's a great opportunity for you to see what's available. If there is a flea market near you, if there is a, a not just a thrift store, but like uh, a swap meet, some call it a swap meet. We have like um, Trader is it Traders uh, Traders Village, where there's a bunch of different um, shops that you can set up. And so if you've got inventory you're needing to get rid of, you know, look into these as well. Also, if you're looking for new inventory ideas, check out some of the trade shows, because I know there's going to be an increase in trade shows. So this article made me think of both of those um, as inventory opportunities to find new inventory or to discover inventory ideas and also to get rid of inventory. So I thought it was a pretty um, interesting article, but it also kind of triggered some other thoughts. The other one is there's an article, as Kelly was talking about, you know, we talked about thrift stores and thrift shops. Um, so this is on CNBC, and they are talking about how to uh, how Amazon plans to fix the massive returns problem. Because I've mentioned multiple times that I think this is the year for liquidation, that they've had an increase in the number of returns, it's it's more than doubled than what they're used to um, historically. And it's just continuing to increase. And it's not something that they were prepared to handle. So through this article, and there's also a video with it, so you can look for it on CNBC. But they're talking about some of the ways in which they are working to reduce it. And a couple of things that they're working on is um, resale. I mean, like, which we've been doing resale forever, but um, resale. And then they're also talking about donations, trying to reduce the amount of stuff that's showing up in the landfills. So um, this is a great one to you know go through and review. Um, 
this problem is happening for a lot of different businesses, not just Amazon, because companies are making it easy for people to make uh, to return stuff. So, I mean, this is what's going to happen if you make it really easy to return stuff. Uh, the return rate has gone up significantly. And so this is clearly becoming a problem with increased trash in um, landfills and also just people tossing stuff out. So, um, yeah, yeah, like the Amazon has that truck, you know, you can try it on and then return it if you don't like it you know and mm -hmm. i hear people all the time in groups are like oh yeah i was shopping for a dress so i ordered 15 from amazon and pick out the one i want then return them all the rest of them i'm like you know what the rest of them just don't go back into, into circulation circulation yeah, they don't go back into circulation they go somewhere else yeah so it's you know go so go check this out Maybe it'll give you some ideas on where your inventory is going and where you can potentially pick up some inventory yourself. But uh, some of it is going definitely to uh, nonprofits and some of it's going to other places. So in any case, I thought this is a pretty good, interesting, you know, pretty interesting article to check out. And um, this is going to continue to be a problem. Liquidation, I think, is where it's going to be. I feel like liquidation this year and next year is going to go up. And as Kelly said, you know, you want to vet some of these liquidation places. And if you can go to a local one, like we have several here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So you want to drive and go look at, you can, you can do that. And that'll give you opportunity to kind of check out some of the pallets. So anyway, CNBC article. Okay. So this one, I don't remember what this one is. This one's fast demise that oh, brings renewed attention. Oh, they're not going to let me finish reading this. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember what this is. I think it has to do with uh, a replacement or a competitor for PayPal. I think that's what it is. I'm trying to give um, others, giving um, some of the other options where people can use that for checkout. So, you know, we use PayPal, Apple Pay, uh, Google Pay. All of those are options. And so I think this is the competitor. It's on Insider. If I can log into my account, I'll bring it back up. But Maybe not. And then the next one <laughs> is BuzzFeed. I always like these little list uh, articles. And the reason I like the list articles is because there's always something good in there that's going to help you in your e-commerce business or that could help you in your e-commerce business or could help you come up with private label uh, product ideas, white label product ideas, and different types of uh, product opportunities. So this one was 20 things uh, from Amazon that'll make perfect gifts. And they're going through and doing an assessment on things that are on Amazon that might make perfect gifts. Now, I'm not going to say I agree or don't agree. I'm just saying there might be a drop shipping opportunity here, a print on demand opportunity here. There might be a Shopify store opportunity here. Like these are all things that right now are big deals. And if you just do a Google search, for, you know, like perfect presents for 2019, 2018, 2017. You might also come up with some other product ideas that might help you, you know, uh, if you're looking for sourcing or if you've got a private label product. Again, I guess it's pretty cool, Kelly. I would do this. I mean, I think this is pretty cool. Would you do this in your tub? No. Just a little bar to go on the I tub? I get down in my tub, I can't get up. <laughs> I was I was gonna say that out loud, but I didn't want to confess it. And, <laughs> well, the other thing is, you know, that's a great Mother's Day gift. So I'm just saying, sometimes these articles are helpful. Uh, wearable weight bands. Look at that around your wrist. Of course, a blender smoothie. Um, then the wireless charging pad. So again, you might want to come check out this list. This is on BuzzFeed. And I don't think it's a bad list. May give you some ideas, especially with Mother's Day coming around the corner. Or some product ideas for sourcing. Because some of these things are not just gifts. They, you know, these are some things you could use for every day. So people are going to be, you know, doing the picnic thing. So there you go with the picnic baskets. I kind of like that one. Oh. Mm -hmm. I bet. For sleeping stainless steel bento boxes, those have been popular for a while. Bento box picks, those are cute. 
Oh, well, they're kitties. <laughs> yeah, those are really cute. All right. It's the cooler. Okay, I think they're lighter, lighter. I don't know what this one was. Sorry, I went too fast. Carol Protector Treatment. Okay. Oops. There goes my screen. All right. <laughs> so, in any case... Um, oh, these little slicer things. I know that they're very popular. So that wasn't a bad list. And the great thing about it is if you like to subscribe to some of these, like you can have your VA go through and just jot down the things that they have when these lists get released. So you can set up a, a Google alert. So you get the notifications and then you can have your VA write down the things and you can go back and do the research yourself. Okay, so it looks like Google is introducing a retail search uh, for e-commerce businesses. I already always felt like they already had one in place, but um, it's designed to help shoppers. So you'll see over time some improvements. This is coming from um, SEJ Search Engine Journal. So you can come and read this article and see how this might impact you or it might impact if you're using like Google ads. I don't know that it's going to impact Bing ads or anything like that, but you know, some of the other search engines might follow suit. So I would take a look at this article and uh, see how you can help your store or your products rank, especially if you're doing Google ads or any other ads. The next one. Oh, come on. <laughs> this one has to do with the cloud. So I'm not even going to go back to that one. And then this last one, is walmart oh should you buy groceries why you should buy groceries from walmart um and so they have a lot of different ideas this is what i will say um brent brooke stennett sorry not brent brooke stennett uh was talking about so um you know he used to work at walmart and he was talking about some of the groceries some of the things you could um sell on walmart that you get from walmart and, you know, groceries are always a good thing, but, you know, the margins are really tight. So finding those things that are unique, those are the things that I like to sell on some of these other platforms that you can't get anywhere else. Like some of the unique stuff that you find at Aldi's or you find at Trader Joe's. Um, but people do buy groceries from Walmart. Um, and so this, if you're a person that's selling groceries, you might want to read through this article. It may give you some additional insights some things to consider um, as a seller of groceries. And, um, you know, and whether or not you feel like this will be a good platform, Walmart will be a good platform for you to sell your products on. So I would come check it out, give it a read, and we'll go from there. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Ms. Kelly? No. No? All right. All right, so we're going to go straight into the e-commerce tips. And we're going to talk about... Eight major things happening in the month of April. So, you know, we're still at the early stages. We're going into the first, second full week of April. And um, there's still time to sell things in April, but this is also a great time to make a note for next year. And maybe in February, you start sourcing for April or January, you start sourcing for April. Um, and it'll give you some ideas on products that you could potentially sell or, or some things that you can consider either selling or complimentary products or whatever you're selling. So I will let Kelly start with number one. And of course, Easter. Um, of course, Easter doesn't always fall in April, but this year it's quite late. It's April 17th, which is this weekend. So if you need to hurry up, make yourself Easter baskets for your kids, you know. Probably not going to find much at the Dollar Tree. Used to be able to. But now they clear out quickly. But you know, hit the hit up your drug stores and stuff. And next, you know, if you can if you can find stuff that's um, non perishable and can last, then you know, hit the Easter clearance sales and stock up to uh, sell for next year. Or you can go ahead and list them now. I've sold Easter stuff in December, so. Someone yeah, I have too. 
you know, and there's all the other, you know, there's Good Friday that's before that. And then if you mm -hmm. want to go backwards even more, you can go back to right after in February. Um, you know, you have um, Fat Tuesday and then good, and then Ash Wednesday. And so from that whole time of, from Ash Wednesday to Good Friday, you could, you know, there's products that people may be fasting, um, depending on what their religion is. And so there's different products and or services that you could potentially sell. Because don't forget, some of these platforms offer, offer you the opportunity to sell services as well. So something to think about. The next one is Earth Day. So Earth Day is this month as well. And of course, the one thing I like about some of these days that we're mentioning is that there's some natural or organic uh, traffic that you're going to get automatically because it will be on the radio. It will be in the news. It will be, there will be blogs about it. And so there, there's going to be, you know, YouTube videos that will be created for some of these uh, items that we mentioned. And so you'll get a natural boost of traffic just because everyone is talking about it. So Earth Day is one of those that's happening um, this month. I just thought about something else, which has nothing to do with Earth Day. Um, mm -hmm. That Prince is, Prince, Prince is um, the musician, Prince. I don't know why I thought of him, but it came into my brain immediately because I guess it's so close to Earth Day. But anyway, um, so Earth Day is one of those. And there's all kinds of products you could sell. You could sell some print-on-demand products. There's some other products you could source. Things to uh, reduce your carbon footprint, especially with that being a topic, because again, as Amazon is trying to handle the number of returns that they're having, they're really working to reduce their carbon footprint. And so this is a thing. And so you could sell, uh, you know, trash compactors and there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, and the great thing about it is that there's going to be a bunch of blog articles on how you can reduce your carbon footprint. So you could use those blog articles to help you decide which products you could potentially be selling in the future or sell now to uh, continue that trend. I'm just saying the holiday means or the event itself means more than what most people think of. So anyway, next one, Miss Kelly. <laughs> Okay, it's Autism Awareness and Autism Acceptance Month. Um, so you'll see people wearing blue. Is that right? Blue yep. Blue. There'll be blue. There'll be puzzle pieces. I'll let you talk yes. and then I'll jump on the back end. But go um, ahead. But uh, people are trying to put out about autism because um, so many families are affected by it and it affects kids differently. You have some kids who are highly functioning and other kids who are very low functioning with the same, you know, disorder. Um, I'm a nurse, so and I work with special needs kids. So I worked with lots of children with autism and uh, I've seen the spectrum and I actually have a cousin who um, has autism and he's my age. And oh. Sorry about that, Kelly. All right, go ahead. I forgot and about my alarm. Yeah, he doesn't, and they didn't have what the kids have nowadays. You know, there wasn't really much for them now. So it's good to get, you know, the awareness out there. And so you'll see, I think some, for a while, it was the blue light bulbs on the front, on the porch. Yeah, light it up blue. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Light it up blue and everything. Um, so... You know, you might see people with, you could sell, you know, T-shirts and bumper stickers and such, you know, to get the awareness out there. Absolutely. So for me, um, because I, my two kids, of course, are on the spectrum, um, it, there's so many products and so many services, but products that are, the people are going to be either buying to support Autism Awareness Month or you know, there might be offers of special sales or deals for different things. So um, the autism therapies, you know, people need um, toys for food therapy. They need weighted blankets. They need trampolines. They need swings. And there's like indoor swings because I've bought them. Um, there's food, specific types of food that some of the families may or may not eat. So, you know, some families are gluten-free. 
and dairy free. And that may be a thing. Um, there's things to help the families with their daily routines and schedules. So there's this, the gamut of what the families need. It runs the gamut and it's a great opportunity for you. If you decide you want to uh, either create products that will serve that community or support that community, trust me, the autism community is not getting smaller. It's getting bigger, unfortunately. And so that means that more and more people are being diagnosed with autism. And that means that there's a greater need for products in that community. So that's the one thing I, I do want to want to keep in mind because it, it's, you know, T-shirts and hats and stickers. And those are all great things. I have stickers on my car, but it goes beyond that. It goes into the therapies and a, a things to support the therapy, especially with some of the things that families will need at their homes. Uh, they can use when their therapists leave or things that can help you know, kind of create a calm environment or help them with their daily routines. All of those things will help support the autism community. So if you have access to some of those um, things and also educational stuff, if you have access to any of that, you know, you should be listing those things, selling those products. Definitely. We do. We sell them all the time. So, but they will, they are definitely products that people in the autism community are interested in. All right, the next one is Coachella Festival. I feel like we have heard a whole bunch about Coachella. Yeah. All of you guys have had to listen to the craziness of this Kanye. <laughs> but that's a big thing for some people. Coachella is a huge thing. And uh, for some people, not for everybody, I don't care about it. But there are people who do care about it. And so depending on the demographic, of your audience, of the products that you sell or things that can support that, that is a, you know, an event. And so if people go to Coachella, you got to think about what are those things that they would need. Maybe you want to talk to people who have been there before. Maybe you want to check out some blog articles or watch some YouTube videos on people that have gone and get some insight into to the types of things that they needed or brought with them um, to Coachella. That would be something that I would do maybe if I was going to take a deeper dive into the research of what's needed. Uh, in addition to, you know, I'm sure that there's print on demand opportunities, but you don't want to get into copyright challenges. So uh, keep those things in mind as well. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Kelly? No, I have no clue what Coachella is, and I really don't want to know. I'm sorry, ah! my dog is going crazy up there barking. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, also, since we're already, Coachella is music, but uh, since we're talking about music for just one second, um, this is also the month in which Prince passed away. And so Prince comes to mind because it's so close to um, Earth Day. I think that's the reason why I made the correlations. Like they're, the days are really close. All right, Kelly, this one is yours. Okay. Uh, it's also Child Abuse Awareness Month uh, and Child Abuse Prevention Month. How to, you know, you could maybe sell books on like, um, how to discipline children without getting mad and, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing um, that comes to mind for me, for sure, I am confident like during this month, Child Protective Services is really busy, I'm sure, for different reasons. They're probably um, trying to put together some some events and or increase awareness in the schools, maybe in churches, in different venues where you have a group of people gathering together to tell them what are the signs to look for. So if you're doing print on demand, you know, printable stuff on the signs of what to look for, how to reach out to somebody, how to connect with them. If there's a nonprofit in your area that's hosting an event around child abuse, like you may want to maybe offer them the opportunity to print their print on demand shirts or their materials, their notepads, pens, hats, that kind of stuff. And in addition to that, you know, I, I'm sure that there's a list of those children that are removed from the home, unfortunately, for whatever reason. And what are the things that those children need? And so there's nonprofits that put those things together. And you may want to sell some of those products that have that, or maybe you just want to donate them to a child, you know, a center or a um, house that needs them. Maybe you've got your, you know, your death pile and you're like, I can pull this out and donate this 
to, um, you know, a children's shelter to help them. So there's so many, there's different aspects of how you can use your business to help support the cause and that community. And the dog said yes in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then this is also Mathematics Awareness Month. Um, and so that's a good one because, again, there's a lot of print-on-demand opportunities. There's a lot of educational material opportunities. Uh, there, I think the print-on-demand is going to be the big one because people are, you know, they're going to be wanting to buy hats and shirts and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, there's different materials in which you could be selling. I think this is also a good time since we're in April to be thinking about what are those little, you know, booklets or workbooks or um, flashcards or things like that that parents might buy so that their children don't regress over the summer because summer is just a hop, skip and a jump away. And we're like right on top of summer, uh, the summer break for most kids. And so, you know, there are some kids that really love mathematics. Some of that um, jumps over into STEM. Um, and so selling those types of things that include some level of mathematics in them or that can help children strengthen their mathematical skills or, you know, you could put together subscription boxes. I remember when they uh, started rolling out subscription boxes for STEM and, um, you know, of course, it always includes math, always. So there's always opportunities to do math. Trust me, when, when I go to the store with my boys. They are annoyed by me because I make them add up everything before we get to the checkout line. I tell them how much money we have and I make them add everything on my phone. Um, I do different things with them so they can increase their awareness of how much stuff costs. But also, I know that at some point they're going to be living on their own. So I need to be able to teach them the skills of being able to manage money. So there's so many different ways in which you can take advantage of Mathematics Awareness Month in your e-commerce business and bless the community and and be involved and engage the community uh with a number of different products that could be sold there's a lot there's just a lot of products nicholas got a calculator this month <laughs> you could be selling calculators <laughs> all right so in any case next one miss kelly uh jazz appreciation month um and we're not talking about utah jazz um <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> It's like the musical jazz. So um, one of the things I do sell is um, I sell CDs and cassette. Well, I've, I've listed cassettes. I haven't sold one yet, but and I've sold records. And, you know, people like to listen to their favorite music. And uh, especially um, there's like festivals like in New Orleans where they have what is festival yes yes and uh they have you know jazz you know festivals and maybe they'll go to a jazz festival and find some new music that you know a new artist they didn't know about and they want to go home and buy that art that artist music and you have that you happen to have it so you know you could be out there looking at that and there's also you know people do a lot of artwork that to go with jazz yep kind of give that bluesy kind of look and such if you are talented and you are really good at graphic design like you can sell all kinds of stuff around this time of the year that's jazz that has a jazz look and feel to it um you know on putting on a canvas um and that's you know doing print on demand people will buy those prints over and over again um, different quotes or sayings from famous jazz singers. Again, another opportunity. Um, of course, T-shirts, um, hats, socks. You know, people would, may buy stuff because it's got the music notes on it. So, you know, socks with music notes on them or a jacket covered in music notes. Like that kind of stuff um, will appeal to specific people who are lovers of jazz. So again, targeting that specific audience with your products. Um, and then also if you have the ability, like maybe you have access to um, a wholesaler or a uh, distributor that you can sell instruments. I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, I hate the little stupid recorder, 
They, they make our kids ever since every year in elementary school, parents every year are learning what the stupid recorder is. I don't think that there is a parent that doesn't have a child that has made it through elementary school that does not know what a recorder is. And, and that's because that's something that, you know, they have a music class in elementary school and they all get to play on the recorder and they get to take a recorder home and blah, 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 blah. It looks like a little flute, but it's not a, a flute. But again, it's another musical instrument. So maybe you decide you're going to connect with a wholesaler because I can tell you every year the school districts are buying recorders. <laughs> or they're telling the parents to go buy a recorder. Oh, they're telling the parents to go buy a recorder. That's right. <laughs> so music runs the gamut, including keyboards, um, all kinds of stuff, sheet music. There's just the gamut of opportunity for you to be selling products. So don't limit yourself. Um, to just one thing. Like you can expand on so many different areas and go so many different directions with it. All right, Miss Kelly. Stress awareness month. Well, this is perfect for tax month. <laughs> about stress awareness with taxes. Yes. I'm sure we're all aware about our stress with taxes. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> We just oh got goodness. our we just got ours done this weekend. So yeah, we were aware of our stress. So <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I'll just say this. Um, stress balls still sell. <laughs> All kind of squeezy kind of things to help people to re reduce the amount of stress in their lives, music to help calm the body. So you the approach you can take with this is you can sell products that are calming or relaxation related aromatherapy yes mm. massage mats all kinds of different things um you can even sell the music like people will buy the music you know those little um what they, they're sound machines or whatever um so you could look at the different things that are available to help reduce the stress and help people to relax. You can even pull together a subscription box around it because sometimes Get people need that. Make some dang it dolls. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Lots of opportunity with stress awareness month, but I bet here's the, what I will say. I bet the majority of you guys didn't even know that these months exist. And I so didn't. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you, you didn't know that all this stuff existed, did you? No. <laughs> Most people don't. And so the great thing about it is with, I will tell you, the econ planner, we're like, we have all these things outlined. And uh, again, giving you opportunities to find products because people always say, I don't know what to sell. I don't know. I can't figure out what to sell. I don't know what to sell. Like, I can't find any products. What should I be sourcing? What should I be selling? Blah, 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 blah. So this is what I will say. We're doing a 90 products in 90 days challenge. Challenge, we're doing print on demand products on Etsy. We're gonna do 90 products in 90 days. And this is a hands-on class. So in the class, we're actually going to come up with an idea for the day. Uh, the first two classes and the last class are, are gonna be the longest. They're gonna be an hour. But the ones that are every day are going to be less than 30 minutes. So if you want to participate in this, you can go to Ecom Sellers Mastery and sign up for 90 products in 90 days on Print On Demand Challenge. And we're going to be doing 90 products. We're talking about just Print On Demand products. It's going to take you, we're going to go through the exercise in 30 minutes and you can do whatever you want to after that. But the goal is every single day putting up a product. Every day, no matter what. And this will also help you if you're challenged with just the level of consistency. If one of the things that you struggle with is consistency in your life, then this will help you with that because you're putting in one product every single day, no matter what. And so we're going to meet um, every day, Monday through Monday or Sunday through Sunday, however you want to look at it. Um, it will be a private Facebook group and you'll be able to do 90 products in 90 days. Whether or not the products sell is a different story. There are going to be some requirements. Um, you're going to have to have a Canva account to be able to participate. That is one requirement. And you have to be able to commit to at least 30 minutes if you're going to participate in this. And then we want to see where you are. We're going to talk about it every single day in class. And again, we're not talking more than 30 minutes. So I'm looking forward to it. 
if you want to see some of the awesome stuff that you know you can create every single day and let me just say this the reality is with print on demand you can make 10 products a day and so in 90 days you can have 900 products so if you want to stretch yourself and push yourself to do more than one product that's fine but again 90 products in 90 days super easy super fast we're going to spend class one going through and making sure you create your etsy account class two making sure you understand what needs to happen and creating your first design right so we're going to walk through creating your etsy account and then also how to use canva in class one class two talking about the designs and the expectations for the class and then creating our first design and then our first two designs because again we will have lost the design on day one and then we're going to continue to go every single day until the last day we're going to do some speed product research keyword research so it's not going to be deep it's going to be what we consider shallow but it's going to be fast and we already have an outline for some of the days from our econ planner which will make it easier for us to say okay today we're creating this product so we're going to do it printables all downloadable printables easy for your customer to receive from you and hopefully in 90 days you'll get some sales is there anything you want to say about that kelly no that sounds awesome but right i know i for me i wouldn't be able to uh join this challenge because i have my daughter who's graduating and then we're planning a vacation in june so i wouldn't be able to <laughs> be there every day so just make sure but you can this, this is what i will say and i would love for kelly and kelly's a great one um mm -hmm. kelly is going to have an amazing thing happen with her daughter graduating and then going on vacation like i am envious of that because i really want to go on vacation but mm -hmm. <laughs> what i will say is that since it is in a private facebook group you can always go back and check out the training session and so a lot of the designs you'll be able to create in 15 minutes. So if you miss four days, you can go catch up in one hour. It's up to you. Um, so not trying to convince Kelly, just trying to let you all know that even if you miss a day or two, it's going to be in the Facebook group. So you'll be able to go back to it and see what day two was or day three was or day four. And then you can play catch up with the rest of the class. But I'm, I'm excited for you, Kelly. Your daughter's graduating. You're not ready yep. for that. You're not ready. I know. She's my baby. I don't have anyone. After she graduates, there will be no one in school. I won't <laughs> have to go back to school shopping. I won't have to worry about, oh, what day do or do they have off this month? You know, you know none of that. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. I'm excited for you, though, Kelly empty nester empty nester oh i got people still in the nest they're just bringing income <laughs> into the house with their stuff <laughs> that's a good thing that is yeah. a good thing we're letting them build up a nice uh little nest egg of their own before they so they're not leaving with empty bank accounts you know there you go so they're not broke them build up a nice bank account before they want to go out on their yeah. own before they jump out on their own so mm -hmm. that that way they have at least a reserve yes emergency fund something mm -hmm. all right well the next i encourage you guys if you're interested in doing the 90 products of 90 days challenge again it is going to be hands-on we're going to go through every single day we're going to design a product together so i mean you'll create it in your own canva account i'll create it in mine yeah. And we'll have a new product every single day, 90 products in 90 days. So um, I'm excited because this is a great one. We're going to probably do another 90 products in 90 days challenge for um, a different platform. And we're going to see how many of these we can knock out. Um, this will give you a little bit of help on what you can be doing or what you can be selling on different platforms. Because the great thing about print on demand, you don't just have to sell it on Etsy. You can sell it on other platforms as well. Then the next thing is... Oh, go ahead, Kelly. That was the dog. Sorry. <laughs> All right. And so thrifting, I want to let you guys know that the thrifting and flipping workshop is coming up. It is this Tuesday, the 12th through the night and the 19th. It's at 8 p.m. If you're interested in learning. Again, I keep talking about the fact that there's a bunch of stuff in the thrift stores right now in the thrift shops because um, people are making lots of donations. And Kelly has talked about 
some of the ways that you can, you know, research some of the products. We've literally had different sessions talking about this. So I'm looking forward to this one. Um, again, it starts Tuesday, tomorrow um, at 8 p.m. And then so it's a two part series, um, thrifting and flipping and uh, finding products. So join us. You can go register at bit.ly forward slash thrift flip. Again, bit.ly forward, forward slash thrift flip. And the next thing is um, inside of Econ Sellers Mastery, we also have the Road to 10K uh, that is coming up. It's the Road to 10K on Amazon and the Road to 10K on eBay. You can sign up for that workshop as well. <coughs> I'm sorry. It's a 90 day workshop. And um, so it's going to be a great one. Um, we are redoing or going through our eBay training and our Amazon training. So if you're a person that's looking to either get started on Amazon or you're already selling and you want to uh, improve some of the things that you're doing or selling on eBay, because Amazon has changed since we started on it. Trust me, it has. Same thing, a little, you know, there's been some changes on eBay as well. So if you want to join the challenge, we encourage you to sign up at Ecom Sellers Mastery. Join us as we walk through uh you know what you need to do on amazon and ebay and there's a whole course outline on what we're going to be covering each time we meet <coughs> and then last but not least we invite you to join us for the daily weekly monthly planning sessions that we host inside of the e-commerce planning facebook group <coughs> i am so sorry i was wondering if my throat was going to start going out but anyway if you want to join us you can just go join the uh, e-commerce planning facebook group it's an open Facebook group where you will um, get some information on what we do on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Um, I go through a session every morning, or at least Monday through Saturday, and we talk about what you need to consider and what you need to be doing in your business um, as far as activities are concerned in order for you to have a highly profitable and successful business and make good business decisions. So with that being said, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. Da, 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 da. Let me get back over here. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. All right, Miss Kelly. Remove. There we go. <laughs> Took me a minute. All right. Well, this has been the Ecom Sellers Podcast. We do this every Monday at 8.30 p.m. My name is Nicole Whitlock, and my partner in crime, my co-host is... Kelly Z, come mom ward. And we invite I'm you to coming. come back and hang out with us. She's got her doggy with her. Uh, we invite you to come back and hang out with us every Monday at 8.30. Share this out with a friend. Let them know about it. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Ecom Sellers Podcast. Hope you'll enroll in some of the classes. And we'll say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all.